Hi, and welcome to The Other Side. My name is Alex Schubert. I'll be your host. The Other Side is produced by Community Counseling of Bristol County, and we focus on mental health issues um, that affect both consumers and their families. Uh, today, I'm here with Matt Cianci, a job specialist with CCBC, and also Fallon. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Welcome. So, Matt, tell me a little bit about what you do as a job specialist. Well, uh, a lot of different things. Um, I specialize in working with people with mental illness and psychiatric disabilities. Um, and essentially, my job is to do whatever is required uh, at the behest of the individual to help them find a job. Um, well, what kind of unique challenges? I mean, I, you know, I, I do work with uh, people with a mental health diagnosis, and, and they're frequently you know, talking about the fact that there are um, extra challenges that maybe people without a diagnosis you know, don't have to face. So what kind of things have you encountered? Well, um, you know, typical barriers, uh, you know, stigma, of course, mm -hmm. um, and then practical things, uh, you know, individuals that, you know, suffer from an illness uh, oftentimes don't have a significant work history. Um, so um, a lack of training, experience, education, um, sure. because, you know, they would have otherwise been dealing with their illness and, you know, in a process of recovery, maybe not ready quite so much to work. Um, so they might be at a point in their life where they're ready to go back to work, but they don't have a lot of traditionally marketable skills. Mm -hmm. um, benefits concerns are a huge thing for people to deal with that collect uh, you know, disability sure. insurance. Sure. Well, tell us like a little bit about that because that's one of the things um, I hear a lot about is if I work, am I going to lose my benefits? Mm -hmm. You know, I can't work because of my benefits. I need them. I'm going to lose them. I mean, how do you answer that? What what can they do and still receive benefits? Well, the good news is, is they can do a lot in most cases. Um, you know, it's important to point out that, uh, you know, information is key. You know, getting the, the right information about Social Security work incentives and entitlements incentives uh, for things like food stamps and housing subsidies is key. So the, mm -hmm. going to the right places to get the right information, working with a uh, state-sponsored benefit specialist um, is really important. Um, the reality is that for most people there are great work incentives to go back to work. There's generally two different kinds of um, disability um, uh, entitlements for people um, that we work with. There's SSI and SSDI and there's mm. different rules for both and it's important to know the difference because you can. It, it's very easy to confuse the work incentives for both. Um, well, how would you find that answer? Well, uh, I'm very familiar with uh, the work incentives. Um, the easiest place for a general person to get information is the Social Security website, ssa.gov. Um, they have great information on there. It's a very interactive website. They have FAQs and things that are, can be very helpful to people. Mm -hmm. um, Social Security used to publish um, something called the Red Book, which was full of all sorts of information for people with disabilities who wanted to go back to work. Um, and they still actually publish it, but really now it's predominantly in electronic format. It's just available on their website. And it's got a lot of great information in it. Um, and, you know, I keep, uh, I keep up to date with trainings and, you know, just kind of being in the community of providership um, and working with people with disabilities, you tend to develop uh, connections with people uh, in the know. And right. as there's changes, which are small every year usually, um, it just kind of becomes, uh, you know, you do it so much, it becomes kind of second nature. Sure. Um, but most people, uh, you know, they're first getting exposed to it. It's, it's very challenging to understand the differences. You know, like most government programs, there's, there's, some, there's some complexity to it, right. unfortunately. Right. It, you know, it does take a bit of practice to get the basics down, but there's good information out there. There's a lot of help available. Um, Mass Rehab is a great source of assistance. Um, right, right. Yeah, they, kind of they, they do a lot of job training too, don't they? Yeah, not so much. They've kind of they've changed their approach a little bit, but yeah, they 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 do they sponsor a lot of education and training. They absolutely do. That's kind of one of their focuses. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So one of those things, um, again, as you mentioned, that the big challenge is is that gap of employment, and that's mm -hmm. you know besides the benefit argument, the other big argument I do here is I have you know a significant gap. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how do I 
make myself marketable mm -hmm. to to employers. So I'm sure that's a huge part of what you do is, is help to market somebody who has a big gap. I mean, what kind of things um, encourages a, an employer to to hire somebody who does have that gap? Well, um, you know, thankfully, um, a lot of employers um, are they are interested in you know hard skills, experience, that kind of things. But a lot of it is soft skills, um, personality, things mm -hmm. like that. There are strengths that the kind of uh, the individuals we work with that we can focus on: uh, people skills, communication. Um, you know, I've yet to find an individual that I've worked with over you know many years that didn't have some you know marketable skills. Um, sometimes just that desire, that to drive to work. Mm -hmm. Um, that enthusiasm about you know finding a job is enough to entice an employer to hire them. Um, so I've I've found that everyone has marketable skills, whether it's um, something that just about their personality or something they learn from life, you know, their organizational skills or you know, like I said, communication skills, what have you. Um, so there's always good raw material to work with. The real question, the challenge becomes um, assisting the person to learn how to market those mm. skills that are really already a part of their personality as opposed to focusing on work experience, formal education, those kind of things. So mm. it's really just about reframing. And is some of that done uh, on a resume level or do you really focus on the interview as the main point to, to, to get yourself out there? Yeah, um, both. But I will say um, it's it's from a you know kind of from a humanistic perspective, being you know I'm a social worker by training, focusing on the individual more, making it more about um, their relationship they can develop with the hiring manager. Yes, you can make them more attractive on a resume, um, but you know it's 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 not necessarily easier to do, but to help someone figure out how to market themselves in an interview mm -hmm. is a lot more effective. A resume is really, uh, it's a crapshoot. It's kind of a, it's a, it either works, you know, and you get their attention with it, or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in an interview, um, you know, it's, it's sometimes easier to impart the kind of uh, personality you're willing, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to sell or uh, a perspective that, uh, you know, might make an employer interested in, in, in hiring you. Um, so... We've talked a lot about the, the various things of getting up to the point of even getting the job. Mm -hmm. But the additional challenge um, is, of course, keeping the job. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the struggles, um, really, with mental illness is that it's not linear, that there are mm -hmm. ups and downs. Mm -hmm. um, and when there's the ups, I mean, there's, you know, there's no problem, especially with a motivated individual. Mm -hmm. But realistically, there's going to be downs. Mm -hmm. And so as a job specialist, what do you do to support somebody who is going through that tough time? Well, uh, you know, if things, you know, do get difficult and someone starts to struggle, uh, a lot of it is just, you know, moral support. Um, mm. Helping the individual or sending the message, I, I should say, to the individual that you're committed to assisting them. Um, you know, offering some reassurance to them that, you know, struggle is a part of life. Um, mm. No one has 100% success 100% of the time with, with anything. Right. Um, I found that sometimes people are most critical of themselves. Um, you know, and if they do make a mistake, uh, sometimes they you know, blame themselves and it becomes kind of uh, a vicious cycle that only kind of drags them down further. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just telling people that, you know, allowing yourself to make a mistake and learn from it, is not only part of life, but it's an important part of life that, that you should embrace. I mean, if we didn't make mistakes, you know, how would we grow and learn? So there's that part of it, this really just a, a big part of kind of the counseling part of the job, mm -hmm. talking with people about the experience, assuring them it's okay, trying to normalize it for them and, you know, make it a learning process. Um, then there's also a big part of it um, that can make, really make the difference for someone um, who's really just getting back to work or maybe even working for the first time is um, working as a intermediary, or if that's a word, intermediate. Yeah, intermediary. I think that's the right word. Yeah, <laughs> intermediary for uh, between them and their employer, mm -hmm. because oftentimes um, 
when people with mental illness go to work, there might be an issue at work that their employer is perhaps not entirely comfortable addressing with them. Hmm. Sometimes it's very common for employers to sense that someone might be struggling with something and perhaps sense that they have a disability or a condition, but there's their fear on their part of addressing it, the issue I mean, without um, suggesting that they are addressing the larger disability. Right. It's a reality in the society we live in um, that you know people are concerned, they're very sensitive about being politically correct or sensitive to someone's disability. Mm -hmm. And so the response unfortunately has been, well let's just stay away from it and not talk about it. And so what happens is that whatever the issue is, regardless of whether or not it has anything to do with the person's disability, which usually it doesn't, usually it's just kind of a performance issue, may or may not have something to do with their illness or their symptoms or anything like that. Um, they just don't address it. The problem gets worse. It leads to a large issue that requires a person to be fired or dismissed. Mm -hmm. So what I can do is by keeping in contact with the employer is really uh, try to prevent that situation from developing in the first place. Mm -hmm. So by staying in communication um, with the person's supervisor or their employer, uh, you know, and just do regular check-ins. Um, and also check in with the individual and, and the employer and make sure that, you know, both of them are satisfied with, with the relationship and the process. This does require the consent of the individual um, for me to communicate, you know, with their employer. Um, but most people are very willing. And I've actually found um, overwhelmingly, the majority of times, that the employer is actually thankful as well. As a matter of fact, it's, it's kind of funny, but um, I can't tell you how many employers have said to me, I wish I had someone like you for all of my employees. <laughs> right, right. Because the reality is that all of us struggle in our jobs at one time sure. or another, and it's a difficult process to navigate for any employer with any employee. It's kind of like having just another person at the table to, to help with the communication. Hmm. So that's, that can make a big difference. You know, it, a lot of times it can make a difference between someone keeping a job or, you know, losing their job. Sure. Yeah. And you do bring up that good point of, um, you know, at one point everybody struggles at a job and it's not abnormal. No. Um, no. And I think some people um, see it as, as more of that, that sign of failure. Gee, I, I can't, mm -hmm. you know, I don't feel like going into work today. And so that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's my illness and that's not just there's something going on that I'm avoiding, right. which is it's just life. very natural. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so one of the things that um, seems to be uh, true is that there's some real uh, benefits to mental health to work. Mm -hmm. I mean, staying at home or um, you know, even having um, a day program can be good, but there's something uh, really fulfilling about work. I mean, have you really noticed that in the people you've worked with? Um, that that things just seem to get better as as they work. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I've worked with lots of people, and I, I, absolutely the majority of them. I, I hesitate to say all of them because I try not to make absolute comments like that. But sure. I I think just about all of them. I mean, I can't think of a person who hasn't found reward in employment. Um, and, you know, it's natural. Mm -hmm. I think human beings, by nature, you know, we're industrious. Um, so many people, you know, that I work with, uh, you know, they tell me they just, they want to contribute. They want to do something. They, you know, they don't want to, you know, stay at home and isolate. Uh, they want to be, you know, quote unquote normal. Mm -hmm. And I'm using their language. I wouldn't normally use a term like that. But a lot sure. of people say that. And you know, I just want to be normal. You know, I just want to have a job like everybody else. Um, and people, you know, always find that reward pretty quickly when they go to work because it is normalizing and it's mm -hmm. healthy. It makes people feel like they're contributing. Um, you know, it, it, it's positive distraction um, from the, the dif difficulties of life, you know, which are a reality for all of us. Um, so absolutely, that's an enormous part of it, if not the, one of the, certainly one of the primary motivators for people. Um, so... Again, one of the, the, the things that people face, uh, and then still an unfortunate reality in our society, um, and part of the reason we really do this program is stigma. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that one factor that um, 
would be nice if it didn't exist, but in reality it does. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things we did um, was we did a little uh, acted vignette, if you will, mm -hmm. um, about that. So I'd like to roll that now, and um, then we'll take some time, and we'll, we'll talk with Fallon about, about your experiences. Okay. So. Hi, I'm Christine. Hi, I'm Susan. Have a seat. Thank you. Oh, brother, who is this turkey? So how did you hear about our job opening? My job coach re recommended you. Well, do you think you're capable of it? There's no way she can uh, do this yes, job. Yes, I am. Anyway, it looks like you haven't worked in a few years. What have you been doing? I've had some health issues. And health issues, yeah, we all know what that's code for. And I'm ready to go back to work. Right, well, the position is a cashier. Is there any reason you think you can't perform that position? Not at all. I she can't handle so cash. She can't handle anything. Again. Do you have any questions? No, I don't. I'm no questions. That's not a good sign. I'll just tell her interview. we're conducting interviews well, and see if that makes her go away. Interviews. We will get back to you if we're going to go further in the interview process. Thank you. Welcome. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm Christine. Hi, I'm Susan. Have a seat. Thank well, you. she's well dressed. That's promising. <sighs> so, how did you hear about our job opening? My job coach, my job counselor. Job counselor, that's not mm -hmm. a bad thing. A lot of people need those in this economy. And I've done this before. Looks like you haven't worked in a few years. What have you been doing? I left my previous job due to some health issues. Mm -hmm. and I've taken Health issues, huh? Well, I hope she can do the job. And I'm trying to get back to work, but with the economy, it's not that easy. I see. Well, the position is a cashier. Is there any reason you couldn't perform those duties for not that position? All. I'm sure I could, with training, more refresher training, I could be fine. Seems confident, okay, do though. Do you have any questions? No, I don't. All right, we're still conducting interviews. We will get back to you if we choose to go further into the interview process. Thank I you. guess I'll call this one back. <laughs> and welcome back to the other side. Uh, today we are talking about um, work in regards to um, mental health and uh, vocational opportunities. So we just watched uh, a little vignette and um, we just wanted to really illustrate um, how at times people have these preconceived notions in their mind of, of that a mental person with a mental health issue maybe can't work, isn't capable, and obviously showing the, the opposite when somebody has a more open mind and is willing to give a shot to somebody. So we're now going to speak with Fallon. Um, Fallon is currently working now, and she's going to tell us a little bit about her experience. So welcome, Fallon. Hi. So uh, I appreciate you coming on and joining us today. Um, so. What are some of the difficulties you faced when you were looking for work? Well, um, I, the thing is, um, when I was looking for work, um, it, I knew I had, a, I had some, I, I'm not technically like um, other people. I, have, mm -hmm. yeah, I do know I have disabilities, and I know I may not have as much chance on um, doing other stuff like um, like other people would, but um, I um, I know that sometimes when you have disabilities, sometimes you do have advantage over some other stuff, and you can do what um, other people can do without disabilities. And so, looking at the strengths that that you have, as opposed to looking at the weaknesses. Right. Cool. Great. So that was something that. Um, you know, I assume you had had to learn at some point. I mean, it wasn't probably, I know most people tend to really focus on their weaknesses first until right. they spend some time. So it sounds like you, you really worked hard on that to, to really focus on that. Yeah, it, it was difficult. I know I, know I, ha I have trouble on some stuff, mm -hmm. but I know that I have support. And if I do something wrong, I, I, am, to I, I am told, I don't mind being told, like, no, this is how it, this is what you need to do. And I'm like, okay, so next time this comes up, I have an advantage of knowing what to do better than okay. what I handled it before. So part of that's kind of an open dialogue with your employer, letting them know that, that you're really open for feedback and, and? Yes. Okay. 
Yeah, I think that's, that's really good for anybody. Uh, yeah. Anybody who wants to be successful needs that quality. Yeah. So, um, so that's an obvious you know, advantage for you. What other supports do you use? Um, I use the support of Matt Seance um, and, and other people in the program. And mm -hmm. um, I find it to be very helpful and pretty good. They, they, they're good people, and um, I, 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 like, I like getting help from them and stuff. When I know I do something wrong, they help me out and say, yeah. this is what you need to do. That's great. <laughs> Not only them, but yeah. <laughs> actually does stuff right, too. Yes, yeah. that, is, that is good. Positive <laughs> yeah. stuff is always good. Yeah. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about um, what kind of work you did with Matt and, and what supports he provided through the process? Um, well, I, I had some trouble, I have trouble sometimes understanding stuff on applications, mm -hmm. and he helps me understand it better. Um, I, um, I, I know, like, I try to go, I try to go out and find jobs, but sometimes it's difficult for me to, like, understand what's on the application, mm -hmm. and he helps me through that, and, um, and if I, if I, I think it would be much harder if I, for me to find a job if it weren't if it weren't for Matt. Okay, so that was kind of a huge component to to have somebody there to to walk you through the application, and I assume he was there to help you through the whole application process. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's definitely uh, again a huge advantage for for anyone because mm. that those applications, especially some of them, are yeah extremely are, tri are, are and, tricky and yeah, like. Sure. You'll say one thing, but it really means another. So, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're, they're not straight out in what they want to know. No, they're yeah. not. <laughs> That's true, absolutely. Um, so I know you're currently working. How long have you been at the job you're at now? I've been at Hannaford's for about a year now. That's great. That's great. And a couple of months. Like I've been, I've been here for, for a year and uh, like a, um, and like a month now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. yeah, that's great. Um, so how are you liking it? Do you like working there? I, I like it. I, I do. Um, I, I originally used to work at an old store almost similar to it. It mm. was another supermarket store, Stop and Shop, but um, I um, then when I moved I was looking for a job in Taunton, and I, I knew some of this. I already knew some of the basics to what to do at the supermarket. Sure. So, yeah. So I did have. I That's do good. kind of like I said. I have kind of an advantage because I do have experience from before on certain stuff. Yeah, that does help. It's just, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if you want to share this or not, but have you encountered any um, particular struggles in this past year? Anything that that um, that maybe you want to share that that you were able to work through? Um, uh, like sometimes um, I have trouble uh, working a certain um, little machine, but um, I, I'm getting better at it now, and I'm. Sometimes I have trouble finding stuff, but I ask for help, and yeah. Okay. I mean, it sounds like a, a huge part of your success is just kind of that, that willingness to ask for help. Yeah. Um, exactly. And again, that's another, you know, another huge asset. People who try to, to do things they can't do without help. Sometimes cause, they're scared to ask because yeah. they're afraid, like, um, like they told me already on the job what ha has to be done, but you're kind of afraid to ask because you can't. Like, because you're afraid, oh, they might judge you and say, look, yeah. then we just tell you this. But you can't be afraid to not ask for help yeah. in life. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, so what are the kind of, or have you noticed any any real benefits from, from employee? And I'm thinking more... Um, you know, uh, mental health benefits or just um, general life quality? I mean, um, well, uh, I, it, it, it helps when, it, it, well, it, it helps because, um, um, like, some, sometimes it's, um, 
like you need um, help. Uh, sometimes, you, like you want to find stuff, you want to get out there and help people, mm. and like I, I usually do help. I used to, I like to be there for people, and I like to help support any way I can, or mm. like help out a person when they need help that has struggle in doing doing something, and I like to help them with that at my job and I find that like you and plus you get to know people like you get to make new friends mm. at a, on a job and it's and it's I think it's much it, it really helps like mm. some people think like you can't like you can't work because oh this is going to stop you but you shouldn't let that happen because like if you get out there you're known more and you're and, you, and like you're known as a good friend and you're there for people. That's yeah. great. So I want to throw this last question out to the both of you. Um, uh, you know, as we know, stigma is um, really a real part of our society. I mean, you, know, you watch the news or you watch popular movies or television shows and the portrayal of mental illness um, is usually far from reality. Um, right. And unfortunately, what that does is put things in the back of people's minds when they meet somebody who has uh, a mental health diagnosis that they are a certain way, that um, frequently they think of them as um, incapable or, um, you know, sometimes unfortunately dangerous, um, all of which we know is not a reality. Um, what experiences have you guys had dealing with um, the employment side of stigma? Um, uh, have you ever encountered any of that, Fallon, yourself? Or have you heard of other people who have encountered that? Um, I, I know some people think that, like, even though you have a disability, oh, you may seem weaker or not, um, or not capable of doing, trying to do good and mm -hmm. trying to get out there and be a friend or trying to m make yourself as, like, like other people, but you really actually can. And some people suffer with it, and they just like they they quit. But you don't have to quit about it. Right. It's it's. I know it's hard, but like get out there and try to make. The more you make friends or feel or do stuff for other people, the more you feel better about yourself to help out. It's. I know it's hard, but like. If you try, you may succeed at something that you realize what, like what you can do. It's Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. And Matt, we're going to give you the last word. What are your kind of thoughts on what you've encountered? Um, do you have that issue a lot where employers need maybe a little education in, in what mental health, uh, mental illness means? Well, unfortunately, you know, stigma is a, a very real thing. Um, I definitely think we're starting to defeat it. I think progress is always being made. Um, I think employment is a big part of that mm -hmm. because employment in some ways is the last kind of frontier for people, you know, in recovery, you know, from illness. It's kind of the last step towards full integration. Um, I talk to a lot of employers. Um, you know, generally speaking, you know, it's xenophobia. People mm -hmm. fear what, sure. what they don't understand. Um, you know, as a community-based, you know, mental health provider, essentially, I mean, I think part of my role is, is to educate people because I think that's really all it is. And, and the more I talk to both employers and individuals looking for work and people that, you know, providers, is, is that, that's what we're fighting against is that people embrace stigma because there's no other information for them. Messages from the media, from movies and things like that are that, you know, people are dangerous or, um, you know, somehow uh, uncontrollable or erratic, mm. you know, if they have a mental illness. Uh, but the reality is, is that, um, you know, the, there are mentally ill people and people living with mental illness everywhere, the ones that we don't know. Um, mm -hmm. It's a convenient target um, for general frustrations in life. And so by working with employers and helping people find employment, we're sending a very, very important 
message, a very real message that having a mental illness, a living with a mental illness, um, doesn't define you in any way um, other than you deal with some symptoms. Mm. So, you know, I think when whenever we help somebody get a job or, you know, we um, help them take a, a step further in their career and, or, you know, in general, integrating further in, in society, we are helping defeat stigma and send the message that um, whether or not you have an illness or a disability or, um, you know, any other uh, unique condition about, um, about your life, it, it doesn't mean anything about you except that. You know, doesn't mean you're dangerous or incapable. Um, you know, I still meet employers that are somewhat resistant to hiring people with, you know, mental illness. Um, but again, I think it's largely because they just don't know what to expect. Mm. Um, you know, it's it's probably something we're always going to struggle with. But I think we're you know committed to the process. And you know, thank you to people like Fallon who are, you know, have the you know, the courage to, to try, uh, they're only limited um, by uh, yeah. their efforts. Just so, because you have a disability doesn't mean you can't make yourself a little better and know. Yeah. And it doesn't make you less of a person. Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate you two coming on our show and, yeah. and talking about your experiences and the work that you guys are doing. So uh, thank you for coming, and uh, thank, you, thank you at home for watching. This has been The Other Side, and uh, we will see you again soon.